Good morning, everyone. Happy Holy Saturday. It is Saturday in Holy Week, Saturday of the Sacred Triduum, the second into third day of the, the Sacred Triduum today. And today we, we meet on a day that there's a lot of uh, maybe confusion around as to how do we celebrate this day? What do we do today? What happened on this day? It's a very special edition of the Sean the Baptist show for Holy Saturday, 2020. I am Sean the Baptist, Father Sean Tunick, with you to give you a, an overview today of not just the, the liturgy, which is, uh, of course, something very dear to me, but really the spirituality of this whole day. Uh, today is a day that um, a lot of people miss kind of what uh, today is about because we just want to rush forward to Easter. We just want to say, okay, well, Good Friday was yesterday. And uh, today's Saturday, so it's um, not a required day of fasting. So uh, what do we do today? Well, we just kind of hang out and, and get ready for the Easter Vigil tonight. Um, so we are going to talk about that liturgy, the wonderful solemn Vigil of Easter, which takes place tonight. It is the highlight liturgy of the year. And like the Good Friday liturgy, there is a lot that happens that only happens on this one day of the year. So we'll talk about that. And uh, this uh Holy Saturday preview, as I've done in years past, uh, takes on a little bit different character this year in the midst of pandemic time, uh, as I will, you know, not so much be giving an overview of what you're going to see tonight, uh, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, this will be an overview of what you would have seen uh, had it not been a pandemic, uh, because even if you're able to watch it live stream tonight, Many of the uh, traditional practices of the, the Great Vigil of Easter will not take place this year uh, because uh, there will be no community gathered uh, physically in the church, and uh, we, will, we will celebrate, uh, as according to the Holy See, uh, an abbreviated, abridged kind of version of the Easter Vigil. Much will remain the same, and much of the spirituality of this day remains the same, but the, the liturgy will have some significant uh, changes tonight. Uh, for those that are familiar with it. So this preview will will not only be about the liturgy as it might be seen tonight, but also some of the things you're going to miss and, and why those are important. All right, as we begin today, um, speaking of the, the spirituality of Holy Saturday, I thought I'd start today with uh, something to kind of set the scene for us. This is a, a reading that would come from the Office of Readings. We've talked before about the Liturgy of the Hours and uh, the various prayers that are said during the day by, by priests and religious. So I'd like to start this morning with uh, the second reading from the Office of Readings today. The, the first reading is always from Scripture, so the letter from the Hebrews today. And the, the second reading is always from a church father, or a church document, something non-scriptural, that is uh, something to kind of meditate on the day. Well, uh, today's reading is very famous, and we don't even know the author. It's just from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday. And so I, I give you this today to kind of set the, uh, the tone for the day. It's titled, The Lord Descends into Hell. I invite you to just kind of pray with me uh, through this as it helps set the spirituality of the day. Something strange is happening. There's a great silence on earth today. A great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh. And he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parent, as for a lost sheep. Greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, he has gone to free from sorrow the captives Adam and Eve. He who is both God and the son of Eve. The Lord approached them bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he had created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord be with you all. Christ answered him, And with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, 
and Christ will give you light. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. Out of love for you and for your descendants, I now by my own authority command all who are held in bondage to come forth, all who are in darkness to be enlightened, all who are sleeping to arise. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I did not create you to be held a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, work of my hands, you who were created in my image. Rise, let us leave this place, for you are in me and I am in you. Together we form only one person and we cannot be separated. For your sake, I, your God, became your son. I, the Lord, took the form of a slave. I, whose home is above the heavens, descended to the earth and beneath the earth. For your sake and for the sake of man, I became like a man, without help, free among the dead. For the sake of you, who left a garden, I was betrayed to the Jews in a garden, and I was crucified in a garden. See on my face the spittle I received in order to restore to you the life I once breathed into you. See there the marks of the blows I received in order to ransom your warped nature in, my, in order to refashion your warped nature in my image. On my back see the marks of the scourging I endured to remove the burden of sin that weighs upon your back. See my hands nailed firmly to a tree, for you who once wickedly stretched out your hand to a tree. I slept on the cross, and a sword pierced my side, for you who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side has healed the pain in yours. My sleep will rouse you from your sleep in hell. The sword that pierced me has sheathed the sword that was turned against you. Rise, let us leave this place, the enemy that led you out of the earthly paradise. I will not restore you to that paradise, but I will enthrone you in heaven. I forbade you the tree that was only a symbol of life. But see, I who am life itself am now one with you. I appointed cherubim to guard you as slaves are guarded, but now I make them worship you as God. The throne formed by cherubim awaits you, its bearers swift and eager. The bridal chamber is adorned, the banquet is ready, the eternal dwelling places are prepared, the treasure houses of all good things lie open, the kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you from all eternity. What amazing reading to set the, the tone for today. Jesus does not promise to restore us to the original paradise. Rather, he goes to the underworld. When we hear the word hell in that reading today, we know that what, what is really happening is that is the, the underworld, the place of the dead, Sheol in the Hebrew this is where all the just souls, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the fathers, the patriarchs have waited since their deaths for the coming of this day, for the coming of the Messiah to rescue them. And so today, Jesus descends into hell, the underworld, Sheol, and grabs by the hand Adam and Eve, raises them up and brings them into paradise. Not the Garden of Eden from which they were originally exiled, but the new fashioned Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, now made just and right and beautiful and accessible to all because of what Jesus did yesterday, his saving death on the cross. That beginning line, something strange is happening today. The king is asleep. Those words take on a, a special kind of meaning. Something strange is happening. This whole situation seems strange, I think, to all of us. But we're meant to enter into this day of Holy Saturday, not in the, the joy of Easter. The church tells us very clearly that the full joy of Easter is reserved for the, the vigil that begins tonight and into Easter Sunday tomorrow. Uh, today we watch and wait. The king is asleep. We remember what would have been going on at the, the tomb of Jesus and in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. The apostles were, were gathered together in sorrow, having remembered the the events of yesterday, Good Friday, it was the Sabbath, so they rested. They stayed inside, gathered together, but they were watchful 
and, and waiting, perhaps some of them would have called to mind the words of Jesus that I will be put to death, crucified and died, and on the third day I will rise. Now, just a little bit about the, the third day. Uh, some people have, have gotten into their, their minds that um, Jesus says he will rise on the third day and three days and three nights he'll be in the tomb. Therefore, Jesus couldn't have died on Friday. He must have died on Wednesday so that we could have three days and three nights until Saturday night into Sunday. Well, it kind of misunderstands a Jewish notion of time. Any part of a day was considered a day and a night. Okay, so uh, Jesus, in fact, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, even though it's not three 24-hour periods, Jesus was, in fact, dead and in the tomb. Excuse me. On on three days and three nights in Hebrew understanding. Friday, Saturday, and, and Sunday, even though it's not three full days and three full nights. Okay? So, Jesus died on Friday, and he rose sometime in the nighttime of Holy Saturday. Why don't we start celebrating Easter now? After all, the suffering and death is, is over. We read about Jesus descending to hell today. Well, because during the day of Saturday, the, the tomb was still sealed. Uh, from an earthly sense, the body of Jesus was, was in the tomb. And then we know that on Easter Sunday morning, the tomb is empty. We'll read tomorrow that very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark and the sun was just rising. So Jesus rises from the dead sometime in the darkness of the nighttime of Holy Saturday into Sunday morning. We don't know exactly what time, and hence the, the vigil that has always been kept at this time, to watch and wait. So that's really the spirituality of this day, watching and waiting. And especially for us who know the end of the story, it is a very hopeful ex expectation, uh, knowing what is about to happen. So the the uh, liturgy of this day, uh, before we get to the great vigil, uh, I, I spoke a little bit about the liturgy of the hours. So I, I read that that beautiful reading from uh, the, the second reading there. Um, and uh, that is, uh, of course, part of the liturgy, the liturgy of the hours. Uh, so um, what do we do today during the day? Well, the church prays the Psalms. The church prays these, these hours of the day. Uh, I haven't spoken about this yet in the in the last two days of our Triduum introduction. But I want to talk a little bit about Tenebrae. Perhaps you've you've heard of Tenebrae or or been to perhaps some kind of celebration that has been called Tenebrae. That's a Latin word that means shadows or darkness. Where does that come from? Well, on this day and the following or the previous three days, the, the celebration of the Liturgy of the Hours has taken on a, a special significance. And so two of those hours, Office of Readings and Morning Prayer, or as they're, they're known in the, uh, the Extraordinary Form Breviary, Matins and Lauds. I've talked about that before. See the Sean the Baptist show on the Liturgy of the Hours. Well, these are the, the hours that were prayed uh, originally in the, the morning, the matins and lauds are morning hours, but um, eventually they got shifted because for things that are too difficult to explain here, the Easter Vigil got celebrated on the morning of Easter Saturday, and the Good Friday Liturgy got celebrated not at, at 3 p.m. as the time of Jesus died, but in the morning of Good Friday, and even the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, it got celebrated on Holy Thursday evening. Uh, Holy Thursday morning. So all of the liturgies got shifted to the morning. So the morning prayer and evening prayer got shifted to the day before. So Tenebrae became the, the focus for the people because it would be celebrated in the evening. Most of the time, the people didn't participate in the liturgies of Holy Thursday and Good Friday and the Easter Vigil. It was very small with mainly only the clergy there because they were in the morning. So in the evenings, people would gather for Tenebrae. Uh, the communal celebration of matins and lauds, uh, morning prayer and the liturgy of the hours. Yes, in the evening. Uh, and traditionally this is done with um, uh, what's called a, a hearse or a, a candelabra of 15 candles. And with the reading of each psalm of matins and lauds, uh, a, a candle would be extinguished until there was just one candle left representing Christ. 
And then that candle itself, now in, in darkness, other than this one candle, so tenebrae, darkness, this one candle would be taken away and hidden behind the altar, and there would be what's called the strepitus, or the calamity, the commotion, and people would bang books uh, to talk about and symbolize when Jesus was taken away and is what we read in our first reading is harrowing hell, uh, that there is this great commotion. And then the commotion ends and the, the Christ candle is brought back. And the, the service ends in darkness except for that one Christ candle. So if you, if you hear about tenebrae or some kind of service that would take place on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday evening, that, that's the tradition of that. Today, uh, the church asks that these hours be celebrated at their appropriate hours as the, the liturgies of today have been pushed back to where they're supposed to be. So the Easter Vigil takes place at night. So on the morning of Holy Saturday, as on Friday and Thursday, the church recommends that we would together celebrate the Liturgy of the Hours, that uh, we would come together and together celebrate the Office of Readings and Morning Prayer, our Matins and Lauds. So maybe you did that today. Let me know if you did. That'd be great. Um, we are uh, in my previous parish at St. Michael. We, we did that each of these three mornings. would get together for uh, Office of Readings and Morning Prayer. So that's what goes on liturgically throughout the day. We pray the hours. Now, of course, the, the big highlight of the day is the solemn vigil of Easter. This is the liturgy of all liturgies. Uh, so St. Augustine himself, the great 4th century bishop, said this is the mother of all vigils. And so it is also um, unique in that it only happens one time a year and things happen on this day that, that only happen once once out of the year. And as I said at the beginning, if you weren't quite on yet, this year is especially uh, strange. Something strange is happening indeed, uh, because one of the, the highlights of, of the whole Easter Vigil, the service of light, the beginning with a not a, a, an introduction, but with a fire, that's well, not going to happen this year. The, the Holy See has said, this year, we, we skipped the fire. Pfft. You know, that, that will be an incredible loss for all of us. Even you think it's, it's hard not being in the church for this. I mean, no Easter fire? I, I don't know. I mean, I think it might even be raining tonight, so it'll just add to kind of the, the sadness. But uh, since we're doing the Holy Saturday preview, I'm going to tell you what, what normally would happen, and we can pretend that the angels and saints in heaven are, in fact, celebrating a liturgy such as this. Uh, because tonight's Vigil of Easter in the Holy Night begins... Uh, with a fire. And uh, that's why the, the instructions for today are very clear. It must be night. It must be dark. Um, we're accustomed to Saturday evening Mass that anticipates the Sunday Mass on a given weekend. And, and there we, of course, can, can start anytime after 4 p.m. and it fulfills our Sunday obligation. That is not what is going on here. Okay, this is something completely different. It is not an anticipated Mass of Sunday. This is the first Mass of Easter. If you, if you look in the Missal, it will say, Easter Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord. And the first Mass is the Easter Vigil in the Holy Night. Nighttime. Uh, there has been a, a sad abuse that people would actually start this liturgy before it is dark, sometimes even as early as like 4 p.m. and do it as a, a time as if it's just a normal Saturday evening Mass. It's the only time in a liturgical document that I've seen the church use the word reprehensible. It actually says to start the Easter vigil at such a time in the evening, like a Saturday, before it is dark, is reprehensible. Ouch. Strong words there, okay? So why, why, in the, why does it have to be the night? Well, because the, the whole vigil starts with um, the solemn beginning of the vigil or the lucernarium. Lucernarium, what the heck? That's a Latin word that means the, the, uh, the bringing of the light, the, uh, the service of light, we could call it in English. And as in the liturgy, the liturgy always works through signs and symbols, okay? So baptism washes away our sins. Well, we're, we're going to use water to symbolize that, signs and symbols. When the Holy Spirit comes and anoints us, we use oil, signs and symbols that even the bread and wine that gets consecrated and becomes the body and blood of Jesus are in fact signs and symbols even though they become what they signify. So in, at Easter the fire, the, the darkness of the night is meant to, to signify the, the way in which 
all the earth is in darkness when Jesus has died. Jesus is asleep in the tomb. What could be more dark than a, a tomb with a stone rolled in front of it? It's as if the whole church has entered the, the tomb with, with Jesus. And in darkness, we wait for this powerful event that is signified in the liturgy, beautifully required in the, uh, the extraordinary form and uh, to, today uh, optional. But the vigil is meant to start in darkness with a spark. It liter literally, the Easter fire is directed that it be started uh, with a spark. Flint and steel, really. So the Boy Scout in me kind of likes this. I, I often get Boy Scouts to, to help make the Easter fire and to, to get it started. Uh, this sparking of the, the flint, uh, it's interesting because the, the missile talks about the flint. Uh, it, it's actually obviously steel that gets hit by flint and the, the steel gets really hot and a little piece breaks off and glows and sparks the fire. But that's, that's the, the magic of this night. We're meant to gather in the darkness, and, and then there's a spark that brings up a big fire. Let me, let me give you the words uh, that begin this. Dear brethren, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Wow. This night, okay, that, that's going to come up again and again on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life. Wait, wait, Jesus didn't do that on this night. I mean, 2,000 years ago, right? No, no, this most sacred night. We'll hear it again when we sing over the Easter candle, this is the night. Okay, this is to remind us that as we spoke about the, the idea of memorial, remembering, anamnesis in, in the Greek, it's much more than simply a, a remember with the mind. It's not a play to, to put on a show that we, you know, kind of dramatize something that happened 2,000 years ago. Really through the sacred liturgy, what, what happened 2,000 years ago? Jesus in the tomb spark of the resurrection, right? That happens right now, again, for us. And not even so much again as that past event, 2,000 years ago, is made present for us right now. And that is why the church very much can say, dear brethren, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life. That's tonight, okay? And so we gather, the church throughout the world, and uh, scattered throughout the world, more so than ever this year, scattered we are not able to have that, that beautiful physical joining that we would normally have in our churches. We are scattered indeed. But through the, the magic of this liturgy, the church is united throughout the world. Like the, the ball dropping on, uh, you know, New Year's Eve and Times Square. I, I always watch, you know, the, the liturgy of Holy Saturday from the Vatican. And, and it's, it's Easter proclaimed in Rome. And then it's Easter as the, the time zones roll on. We are united more than ever when the church gathers to celebrate Easter. And we will gather in our homes as little families. We will gather via live stream and, and watch it take place. We are gathered. And I, I pray that tonight in your homes, I grab your candles. Grab your baptismal candles tonight. Okay? That, that candle you were given in your baptism, go find it. Go find all your kids' baptismal candles. Find your baptismal candle. And as you're watching the live stream tonight and we sing over the new paschal candle in the darkness of the the church light your light your little candle light your baptismal candles at the beginning of the liturgy light it again when we knew the baptismal promises okay so that's what's supposed to happen we we have this big fire and then there is a candle now we will still have the candle tonight the paschal candle the easter candle and it will still represent christ for us um little uh probably we will bless it in the the normal way, and then rather than lighting it from the fire, as normal happens, we'll, we'll just light it in the sanctuary. But what normally happens is a procession with the, the candle. There's a special blessing over the candle that takes place, and and then it's it's wonderfully raised in the, the darkness of the church uh, after the blessing, and we say, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And then there's a procession now, a lot of the liturgies over the last three days have, have spoken of things from the Old Testament. 
we think especially how many times we've heard of the crossing of the Red Sea and Moses leading the, the people out of slavery into to freedom in Egypt all those years ago. Well, our procession into the darkness of the church with the, the candle representing Christ is meant to be something like that. Okay, the, the sign of this light and darkness is, is obvious to us. But it's also meant to call back to our mind the, the exodus from Egypt in which it's described that the Israelites were led out of Egypt by a pillar of fire and uh, a cloud. Pillar of fire and a, a cloud of, of smoke. Uh, well, that's what we do. The, the incense, the, the cloud goes before the pillar of fire, the Easter candle, into the darkness to lead the way. A beautiful sign back to the Exodus. And really, what is it leading toward? It's leading towards water, towards the water of baptism which, again, sadly will not take place tonight. But normally, the, the symbolism of this, you know, pillar of fire, column of, of smoke goes, goes before us as we approach the water of the Red Sea. Now, that's what happens at the Easter Vigil. And three times the, the deacon sings, Lumen Christi, Light of Christ. And the people respond, Thanks be to God. And each time then, we increase the light. The, the first time, it's just the Paschal candle. Then the, the priest is carrying a little candle representing his baptismal candle, and it get, gets lit. And then all the people's candles are lit. And that's, that's a, a beautiful thing where this one light is divided amongst everybody, and the church really starts to light up from all of our little candles representing the light of our baptism, the light of Christ. And finally, after the, the procession arrives to the, the sanctuary and the deacon sings Lumen Christi the third time, all the lights in the church are put on. So notice this progression. We go from darkness to fire to that light being spread to all of us to all the even electronic lights of the, the church today are put on. From complete darkness to light. Uh, really doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. That's, that's what happens at Easter. And that's what's going to happen for us tonight in, in the course of this liturgy. We sing of Christ risen from the dead in the new light of Easter. Now, the part that is retained, unfortunately, most of all that is not going to happen uh, tonight. But what we will start with is probably some kind of greeting and blessing of the candle. And then there is a long, drawn-out chant called the Exultet. Um, it literally, from the present passive subjunctive of the Latin, Exultet means let them exult, let them rejoice. Who are rejoicing? The host of heavens the angel ministers of God. Those are the ones. And so we have this long chant that gives thanks over the candle uh, for the new light. And it has some of the most beautiful lines that we'll hear. It's about seven minutes long or so when it's chanted. So we're all standing there holding our candles with the, the lights are supposed to be on at this point. We've, we've brightened the night. And so the, the deacon uh, sings the over and over again, this is the night. This is the night, over and over. When you once led our forebearers, Israel's children from slavery in Egypt, made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. There it is. This is the night that with a pillar of fire, ooh, we talked about that, banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that, that sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. That is so beautiful. This is the night in which Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. And then, hear these. Uh, our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity, beyond all telling. Hear this. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. Oh, truly necessary sin of Adam. Destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Wow. Necessary sin of Adam? Happy fault? How can we say this? Well, remember, without uh, the, the fall of Adam, we were just in that earthly paradise. Remember that first reading. I promise not to return you to that paradise, but to take you to a greater one, to heaven itself where instead of the angel guarding that you can't enter the Garden of Eden again, you're cast out of paradise. Instead, the angels welcome you into heaven and they worship you. 
the angels worship us because we have been taken to heaven. So that sin of Adam, that's how come we can call it a, a happy fault, a necessary sin of Adam even that won for us so great a redeemer because Christ has completely destroyed it. All that and more in the exultant tonight. Uh, so I, I invite you to to listen to that. And uh, one of my, my favorite kind of parts uh, that, that comes up, okay, it sings uh, for the candle, uh, divided yet never dimmed by the sharing of its light. So too is our faith. When we, when we share the faith, what, we don't give something away that's divided. Rather, like those candles that get lit, increasing the light, the faith spreads. And, and although the flame is divided, it's not, it's not dimmed. It actually grows. And then, I love this, for it is fed by melting wax drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Bees? What? Why are we singing about bees? We, we actually edited this out in the original English of this, but it was always there in the Latin. Yes, it talks about bees. Why? Because even the candle itself is meant to be seen as a sacrifice. That's why you, you can't use an oil candle tonight, and you can't use last year's candle. The directions say it's got to be a new candle made of wax blessed every year. Why? Because it, it the candle itself signifies sacrifice. It gives itself. It's burned up. In order to produce the light, the wax itself is destroyed. And that, that wax is actually a gift of the sacrifice of, of bees. And so over and over, we're calling to mind that the sacrifice that goes in, the sacrifice of the bees, as it were, to work to make the, the wax for the candle, and the candle itself that gives up itself so that we might have light. Such beautiful stuff in this. Uh, this is probably a 7th century text. Um, it, it's just a glorious. And, and so we, we sing it tonight um, that we may preserve undimmed, overcoming the darkness of the night. We may receive this candle. That God may receive it as a pleasing fragrance. The, the beeswax itself gives off this, this beautiful odor. May, may this light mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets, Christ your son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light upon all humanity. The morning star, by the way, Venus, the planet Venus, peace, peace, peaceful light, Venus, could be a connection there. Peaceful light on all humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Just Flippin' gorgeous, isn't that? I mean, just read through that. If you want something, like, what do I do on Holy Saturday? Pray over that, okay? Uh, it, it is really beautiful, and I, I pray that you get to hear it tonight, uh, live stream. It, it will be uh, one of the things that is retained, okay? So that's the whole first part of the, the Easter Vigil. The Lucernarium, the service of light. And unfortunately, most of the first part will be not seen tonight uh, and very much abbreviated just to the, perhaps the blessing of the candle and the, the singing of the exultate. Now, the, the second part is the liturgy of the word. And if, if you were to ask most people, like, what is the most important part of the Easter Vigil? Well, people would probably point to, um, well, the, maybe the baptisms of those uh, new Catholics who are you know, entering the, the church at, at Christmas, at uh, Easter, you know, to, the baptism, it's got to be that. Or maybe it's the, you know, maybe it's the fire. People would point to that. Uh, actually, the church says that it is the liturgy of the word, and especially its extended form tonight, that really gives the Easter vigil its proper character as a vigil. Okay, vigil means to watch. Uh, a vigil is one of the, the watches of the night. Uh, and so, the church keeps vigil. We watch. What are we watching for? Well, we're watching for the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, which, as we said, took place during the night. And so how do we watch? Well, again, we do it in the way that the, the Jews kept watch. They read the scriptures on the night of Passover. They retold the Passover story. And so what did the early Christians do on this night? They gathered together in, in their homes, much as we will do tonight and eventually together in, in churches, and they read the scriptures. 
they read particularly from the Old Testament, saying, hey, remember that story about Moses going across the Red Sea? That, that's like what happens. It, it's like we're being let out of slavery by, by Jesus into freedom of new life, simplifies by baptism. You know, so what do we, we tell the stories? Hey, remember when Isaiah spoke about how water would come, living water? Hey, that's like baptism. Remember when Ezekiel spoke about how the, the dry bones would arise? That, that's kind of what happens in, in baptism. And hey, re remember when Abraham took his son Isaac up Mount Moriah and, and almost sacrificed him? Well, Jesus actually did that. God the Father actually gave his son in sacrifice yesterday on Good Friday. And so what do we do for the vigil? We, we read. The, the longest and most characteristic part of the vigil is actually reading from sacred scripture. Dear brethren, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. So on this night, uh, we know that when we normally go to mass, like on Sunday mass, there's one reading from the Old Testament and then there's one reading from the New Testament and then there's the gospel reading. So kind of three readings. On this night, there are nine readings. The first seven of those are from the Old Testament. The, the first one, um, and I should say that uh, there, there are seven proper Old Testament readings uh, for pastoral circumstances. Uh, the number can be reduced. Um, a lot of times uh, people end up uh, reducing them to say four Old Testament readings. I think that's what we're doing here. When I was pastor, we always did all nine of the readings because that's, that's the whole point really of the vigil, that it's a night watch. Uh, so there might be uh, as many as nine readings, but if it's abbreviated, just know that that, that is technically allowed. Uh, so the first one is about the creation, that we go back and read the book of Genesis, the very first words of the Bible in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, Easter is like a new creation, a recreation. God refashions the world. And then we have the, the story of, of Abraham and Isaac that I mentioned. And we have readings from Isaiah and Ezekiel and Baruch. And so all, all of these um, are meant to point to the way in which the Old Testament has been fulfilled in the New Testament. There's a great kind of line in our Christian understanding that says the, the Old Testament is concealed in the New, or, or that the, the New Testament is concealed in the Old and the Old Testament is revealed in the New. Uh, sometimes people want to say, well, there's the New Testament and, you know, that, that's, that's the God I worship. And then the, the God of the Old Testament, that's old stuff. It's gone. And, you know, that's been superseded. Not at all. Okay, as, as Catholics, we know we have the whole Bible, the non-abridged version, you know, even what our, some of our other Christian brothers and sisters call the, uh, the Apocrypha or the, the Deuterocanon, the second canon. The, uh, Martin Luther took out books of the Bible. The Catholics, we got the whole Bible, unabridged, all the books. And um, the Old Testament, just as important for us today as it was for the Jews and remains important for the Jews. We got the whole thing. And so tonight, we, we read the Old Testament, and, and let me just say a word here that um, the, uh, the readings from the Old Testament, sometimes people mistakenly don't read what it says in the Missal, and they, they keep the, the lights off during the readings from the Old Testament. Uh, they're not really supposed to happen that way. As I said, the, the lights of the church are instructed to go on after the third chant of the deacon Lumen Christi. So the exalted itself is sung with the lights of the church on. Uh, we don't read the Old Testament in the dark. Okay, we read the Old Testament in the light of Easter, in the light of the New Testament. We as Christians read the Old Testament in a way that the Jews could have never had um, because we are enlightened with the full meaning of like, what, is, what was the crossing of the Red Sea really about? I had prefigured baptism. You know, what, what was Isaiah talking about when he was talking about living water, like ah, baptism, all these things. So we are enlightened as we read the Old Testament. And so all of the readings that are chosen tonight are chosen for the way that they point forward to what Jesus has done. Now, at the end of the Old Testament readings, uh, which each, by the way, has their, their own uh, responsorial psalm, and then there's even a little prayer. So we, we sit, we listen to the reading, we hear responsorial psalm, and then we stand and the priest prays a little prayer. And then we sit and do it again seven times. At the end of the seventh reading, 
we will get to hear the Gloria and Excelsius again. Glory to God in the highest. Um, when was the last time we heard that? Holy Thursday night. Evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. Remember, we, we heard the Gloria for the first time during Lent. We, we rang the little bells and we rang the tower bells. Well, we'll do that again tonight. Uh, and the, the instructions, remember, said that on Holy Thursday night, the bells ring at the Gloria, and then they do not ring again until the Gloria of the Easter Vigil. So um, people that are used to the bells ringing on the quarter hours here at St. Patrick's, I haven't heard them. Uh, they've been silent. And we will get to ring them again here uh, in the Gloria. And, and so we're actually directed that a couple additional things happen to the Gloria. The, the candles on the altar are lit. Uh, so there's a little bit of an addition of, of light. Uh, and the, the images that have been covered uh, at this moment, uh, the, they can be uncovered at the beginning of the Mass in the, in the new rite. But in the old rite, this is the moment at the Gloria where all the, the images are, are uncovered. The, all those purple veils would go away at this point. And it used to be that you couldn't even have flowers on the altar uh, until the Gloria. So there would be like a, a procession with flowers. I loved doing this uh, when I was pastor and when I was director of liturgy, like at the St. Lawrence Center. Um, our, our icons had doors that closed. And I would get like a dozen people to to uh, carry forth the, uh, the flowers. We would put them in place before Mass, and then everyone would come and take a lily and, and take it away. And then as the Gloria is playing, we were opening the doors to the icons. We're lighting the art, altar candles, and people are processing forward with the, the lilies and putting them all over the altar. And it's really quite a, a joyous moment uh, at the Gloria with the bells ringing and the, the organ is playing again because ideally... Um, the organ and the instruments don't play until the Gloria, from Gloria to Gloria. Um, now, they're allowed to help the singing, uh, but uh, I always tried to do it, so we, we actually just did all of the, the Liturgy of the Word a cappella uh, w without instruments, and then all of a sudden during the Gloria, the organ opens up, and every, oh, it's just one of the great moments in liturgy right there, folks. We talk about great moments in sports. The, uh, the Gloria at the Easter Vigil, one of the great moments in liturgy. Uh, so we'll still get to do that tonight, uh, with just with without all the people and probably without as quite much excitement. Okay, then uh, we we have a reading from Saint Paul's epistle, and and we hear about Jesus raised from the dead, and then uh, we we have that moment that we've all been waiting for uh, since Lent began, or since Septuagesima began. If you're following the old calendar, we have not and. It, it, it the, the A word, okay? Uh, when I when I was in choir uh, and we had to practice, we repra replaced the syllables, so we said anenuna. We used N's instead of L's, if you get what I'm saying. I don't want to say the A word too early because it ain't time yet. I'm not going to jinx it, okay? Uh, so anenuna. We're going to get to say that with the L's tonight. Uh, and we're actually so happy that we get to say it again. It, it's beautiful because um, if if the bishop is presiding, the, the deacon actually comes forward and says, Most Reverend Father, I bring to you news of great joy, the news of Anenuna. And, and then it, it's actually directed in the missal that the priest himself sings that word uh, in a, a solemn tone. And then raises his voice and does it again. And then raises his voice a third time. So we, we were so happy to sing it. We sing it three times, each time raising the pitch. And all the people repeat it back. And, and then as the procession forms to go read the gospel, uh, St. Paul's epistle to the, the Romans, uh, or, or excuse me, Psalm 118, is uh, sung back and forth about the the stone re rejected by the, the builders has become the cornerstone and, and all this. And we're, we're singing on a new now over and over in between. And so we're just really happy. We're super happy at that point to be able to say that word again because it's it's been a long time. Um, then we have the gospel uh, proclaimed, finally, the, the rising of Jesus from the dead. And uh, that's the ninth reading, the completion of all of it. Uh, and then there is what everyone waits for, really, the homily. Okay, well, the, the homily is maybe not the highlight, and uh, but it's it's a, a homily that, it, however brief, is to be given, and it's supposed to explain a little bit uh, the mystery of baptism, and 
what we're about to do because ordinarily on this night, we would now get to the the third part of uh, the Easter Vigil, and that is the celebration of the rites of initiation, this, the baptismal liturgy. We will not do that tonight, and that is very sad. And I, especially, I thought yesterday, you know, during the Good Friday liturgy, we, we have this solemn intercessions and we pray for the catechumens. Whew! I especially thought of the catechumens this year who are just ready to go, and this is the big night, and they would normally be baptized tonight, and they won't be because of pandemic. You know, um, catechumens out there, shout out to you. Uh, we know the uh, baptism of desire. Many of the catechumens in the early days of the church never got to have their baptism either because they were they were martyred before they got their baptism. Now, we, we pray that uh, catechumens will not be martyred tonight, but nonetheless, they are not going to get to have their baptism. And so that baptism of desire said that the, the martyrs who, who died before their baptism uh, actually received the grace of baptism because they were deprived of baptism through no fault of their own, and they had the desire. So, much as we make a, a spiritual communion at the time of communion, you know, maybe catechumens, maybe make a, a spiritual act of baptismal promise tonight, I guess. Um, we will renew our baptismal promises, those of us who have been baptized, and although you haven't made those yet, maybe go ahead and, and make those tonight in a spiritual sort of way that you, you desire baptism and Certainly, if something would happen before you were baptized, uh, much as we believe baptism of desire for the, the martyrs, uh, we, we believe that God can, in fact, give the grace of baptism and eternal salvation, uh, even apart from the sacrament, if he so chooses. And so, catechumens, this is still your night, and, and you'll have uh, your baptism eventually, we pray. Um, so, the whole church will be suffering by not seeing the new Christians uh, reborn in baptism tonight. But... The one thing that will happen is the renewal of baptismal promises for all those who have been baptized. Remember I told you at the beginning of Lent this would happen, okay? Um, you know, we, uh, we we get to do that. And so the, the priest will ask you, do you reject Satan? All his works, all his empty show. You know, so three times we get to yell, I do. In, um, in the early church, uh, you were yelling, I reject. Beautiful, because the... The descriptions of the early baptismal liturgies describe those who are to be baptized. They face west to the land of shadows and, and darkness and uh, associated with Satan. And three times when they're, they're at, do you reject Satan? I reject. And it says that they would yell it with much gusto and they would even spit to the west. Now, coronavirus time. So maybe it's the spitting that got people upset that we can't do baptisms. I don't know. Um, so there will be no spitting tonight. Uh, and there's there's not actually spitting required, although eh, I wouldn't mind if people turn to the West and spit. You can do it in your home, maybe. Just check with your mom first. Uh, but that's how serious our rejection has to be. And then we talk about conversion, conversio. That really means to turn around. So after three times they reject and spit to the West, you turn around and face East, the land of the rising sun from which Jesus, the one who rises, the Oriens, the Oriens Exalto, the one who rises on high, uh, from on high, we would turn east, and then you're asked, do you believe in God? And people would yell just as loudly, credo, I believe. Credo comes from uh, the, the Latin word uh, put together, core, heart, and dare, to give. So uh, do means I give. Core, do, cordo, 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 credo, credo in unum de. Yeah, I believe. I believe in God. Credo, I, I don't just think it with my mind. I give my heart to this. And so with much gusto, do you believe in God? Credo, I believe, I do, as we say today in, in English. So I, I give my heart to, I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Credo, I do, I give my heart to that. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, all that? I do, credo. And, and so tonight, uh, in your homes, uh, you'll get to, to yell and Go ahead and yell those I do's really loud. I think sometimes we're in church, we're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to stick out. I mean, I don't want to be the one to yell I do. Go ahead, families. Yell I do as loud as you want to in your home tonight. And uh, with much gusto. And by the way, um, at, at this moment, we, we would, in the, the liturgy, be relighting those little candles that we carried in uh, from the, the Paschal candle. Uh, we'll probably do that, I think, even with just the priest. Um, but light your baptismal candle. Okay, so when it comes after the homily, uh, and and we're we're gonna 
We're going to renew our baptismal promises. Go, go get your baptismal candle back. Uh, we, we blew out our candles when we sat down for the liturgy of the word. Um, light it again. Light your little baptismal candle and renew your baptismal promises. There's something that, that maybe you don't get to do at the Easter Vigil. Although I'd be cool if everyone showed up to the Easter Vigil with their baptismal candle. That'd be super cool. Um, in fact, I don't know. Tonight, I might just take my, my little baptismal candle myself. Maybe. I haven't done that before. Because I'm always like involved in the liturgy and maybe I... I might do it. I might bring my little baptismal candle myself to the Easter Vigil tonight, and you can certainly do that at home. Okay, so we knew the baptismal promises, and uh, unfortunately, that's all That's all we get tonight from the whole baptismal liturgy. Normally, there would be the anointing with chrism, confirmations, all that. Eh. Not tonight. No blessing of water even. Um, so kind of sad. Uh, but after that, we, we move on to the, the final part of the liturgy of the Easter Vigil, and that is the fourth part, the liturgy of the Eucharist. And and here it is um, uh, basically mass like normal, as you would say. Uh, although the, the tabernacle would be empty uh, normally. It might not be this year because of the pandemic instructions, but um, normally the tabernacle would be empty. Uh, and so we are going to celebrate the Eucharist for the first time since Holy Thursday. And uh, there are a couple changes that take place in the prayer, so uh, you'll you'll hear, you know, um, on this night again in the middle of the the consecration, beautiful there, uh, and and finally we receive the Eucharist, the the presence of Jesus, and man, again, not to be able to receive the Eucharist at, at Easter. Here I just know that when I receive tonight Jesus in the Eucharist, I do so on behalf of all of you. I unite my communion to all of you who are not able to receive the Eucharist at, at Easter. That will no doubt kind of uh, darken a little bit of our Easter joy this year. I, I am with you. It will, it will be sad. Um, after that, the, the Eucharist is put back in the, the tabernacle. And you know how that little light always burns by the tabernacle? I like to take the light from the Paschal candle and, and light that. It's kind of like the Olympic torch sort of thing. You know, like passing the flame. I don't know. It's not in the missile, but I kind of like to do it. So that the, the light of the new fire of Easter would, would continue to burn by the, the Eucharist now back in the tabernacle. All right, the, the end of this. The way it all ends. I talked about Ane Nuna. All right, so we're going to have the dismissal for the first time in the, the Triduum. Remember I said on Holy Thursday, we, we have the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And that's how it starts. No dismissal, no go forth, the Mass is ended, until the end of the vigil. No dismissal at the end of Holy Thursday, no dismissal at the end of Good Friday, because it's all one liturgy. Okay, Jesus began his liturgy in the upper room on the night before he was to suffer, and it carried all the way through until his resurrection from the dead. Uh, so we do that too. And so tonight, you will hear, go forth, the Mass is ended, or go in peace for the first time since... Thir since uh, since Wednesday, since Mass before the, the Triduum. And uh, we're so happy to be able to say Anenuna again that it gets repeated at the end and every day for the next eight days. Because guess what? Every day is Easter for the next eight days. And in fact, the whole season of Easter begins tonight and it goes for seven weeks. Isn't that cool? I mean, we, we had six weeks basically of, of Lent. Well, we're going to have seven weeks of Easter. All right? It goes all the way up until Pentecost. Um... The only other liturgical note that I will bring up is that uh, one thing that is uh, unique to the Masses of Easter Sunday is that there is the the sequence, uh, Victime Pascali Laudis. It comes after the the second reading and before the Aninuna of, of Easter Day. Um, what is a sequence? Like, we don't have very many sequences left. Um Christians raise a I don't want to sing the whole thing because it's not Easter yet. No, I'll get too excited if I start getting into the, the sequence. But um, this ancient tone that is used sings about uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And it's only sung on Easter Sunday and throughout the octave. Uh, sequence, secare in, in Latin means to follow. And um, here's a little bit of liturgical insider baseball. The, the sequence was a special embellishment that was tagged on to the end of the Ane Nuna. Um, so it followed that. And since Sakura following, it was the, the thing that followed, the sequence. Now we do it before the Ane Nuna. And we still call it a sequence. 
go figure. There are only a couple of them left in the church. Easter, uh, the sequence for Pentecost, Veni Sancte Spiritus, the uh, Stop at Mater, by the cross or station, keeping that one for Our Lady of Sorrows, and uh, Boni Pastor for Corpus Christi. So four sequences left. This is a big one. This is a big one. So that you have to look forward to on Easter Sunday. Why should I watch Mass again on Easter Sunday? Well, the readings are different, and you've got the sequence. Okay? Um, and then the whole thing continues for seven weeks. Uh, the octave of Easter, just like we had an octave of Christmas, we have two octaves left in the, the calendar in the ordinary form. Every day is celebrated as if it's Easter for, for eight days. Does that mean I can eat meat and party and don't have to fast every day for, yep, eight days, go crazy. Chocolate bunnies, Russell Stover cream eggs, knock yourself out. Eight days, it's Easter. Um, and then the season of Easter goes for seven weeks all the way up until Pentecost. And so the Paschal candle will be kept burning at each of those liturgies. All right. Whew. That is a heck of a lot of stuff. I admit it freely. Holy Saturday is an incredible day in the church. I pray that this would be uh, a day in which you celebrate with your families. Watch, wait. Uh, you know, it is stay-at-home kind of order. So um, just just don't start the full celebration of Easter until tonight. We are watching and waiting. Uh, the church even directs that the, the cross that we venerated yesterday could be kept for veneration today as well between two candles. So maybe you've got uh, your crucifix at home. Put it on a table with two candles that people can come and, and pray in front of, even today, as you uh, prepare. And and then as the sun sets tonight, um, get ready for those live streams. Uh, I will watch probably the, the Easter vigil from, from Rome, and I will watch from Washington, D.C. Oh, I see my friend Susie is on. Susie Kavinsky uh, is on from D.C., speaking of D.C. Um, she's in the, the choir at the National Shrine, a good friend of mine. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's weird watching even from the National Shrine because there's like five choir members that are all spaced, you know, like six feet apart. Ah! And normally there's a huge orchestra at the National Shrine and won't be able to have that. So I don't know what will happen from Washington tonight. Um, I, I watched the, the Via Crucis, the Stations of the Cross from, from Rome last night. And the liturgy, it's all so empty and, and strange. So something strange is happening. Those are the words we began with today from that second reading from Matins. Something is strange as well. Uh, Mauricio says that he doesn't speak English. Lo siento, Mauricio. Uh, hay un live stream en español de San Patricio est, uh, esta noche. Uh, español y inglés. Bilingual uh, esta noche. So we'll have live stream. Our vigil here will have Spanish and English. Um, so uh, we'll do a little bit of both. Um, we'll be together. Tonight, the Holy Church gathers. And that's true as any Easter. The Holy Church does gather tonight, even even if it's strange. Um, know that as we gather around our live streams, which is not even required, but might be fitting, um, get out your baptismal candles, light them up, renew our baptismal promises, make, make spiritual acts of baptism, you catechumens, make spiritual acts of communion, those of us who can receive, uh, and, and tonight will be special. Father Mark here is always praying for a, an Easter miracle. Milagro de la Pascua. It will happen. Uh, I don't know what it will look like, but there will be an Easter miracle. And maybe it's that instead of people ignoring the Easter vigil and, and nothing happening, maybe everyone will gather in their homes tonight like Jews have done for the Passover for thousands of years. Maybe we will gather and celebrate the, the resurrection of Jesus in a way we've never done before. And maybe it will restore faith in a way it's never done. I don't know. But I know that the primary worker of this whole liturgy is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit definitely has something incredible in mind for this very strange Holy Saturday. I will take you to the altar with me as I go tonight. Know that you will be there. This has been the Sean the Baptist Show for Holy Saturday 2020. Holy Saturday in a triduum like none other. Holy Saturday in pandemic time. I pray that God would bless you on this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And on this day when we don't get to celebrate baptism, St. John the Baptist, pray for us. Have a great Holy Saturday, everybody. God bless.